Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ryan Rye Mechanic channel. How the heck are you doing today? Okay, on today's video, this is going to be a short format video. So I know my videos are typically pretty long, so I take my normal video and I chop it down to where a lot of people can finally stomach the content. <laughs> so let's get into today's video. Now get ready. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, mainly the the biggest advantage of magnetic brakes is that there's no contact so there's no clacking of brake fins there's no worn down brass that has to be repetitively replaced and typically there's no wear on the vehicles either so you've severely reduced the amount of maintenance to the vehicle and track and structure and then you've also made the ride a little bit more reliable since the magnet magnetic brakes are much smoother and they can deaccelerate the train quicker smoother faster than standard pinch style brakes can do so we're starting to see them pop up on pretty much everything there are two main styles of magnetic brakes there are the type of brakes brakes that are mounted uh, where the magnets are mounted on the train and the fins, the brake fins, are mounted onto the track. The other style is that have to do with like LIM style rides that use inductive launch and those magnets are typically mounted on the track because the train already has the fins on them. The fins on the train are called reactive fins. There you see the brakes in the track. Typically they do something like there's two methods to applying magnetic brakes breaks is to raise and lower out of the track and this can be done both ways you can raise and lower the magnetic shoe into the track and uh, you can also do the same thing with a fin depending on which ride you're on on a hydraulic launch ride those fins will lift up out of the track and lower back down the track. Uh, then there's another one where the magnet stays in place all the time but it slides apart as the train comes through the two literally slide this way apart from each other to break the field and allow that fin to pass through the next thing I wanted to talk about is why magnetic brakes are used and I, as the, at the beginning of the video I mentioned that because they're relatively no maintenance to them and there isn't but the nice part about that is that whatever brake is in the applied position, whether it was fins up or shoes down or whatever it might be, that can be done with springs. So in the event of a power failure, air loss, system loss, anything like that, those brakes will come up, lower down, whatever they might need to do to slow down and stop the train. So that is one of the fail safes that's built into the ride. Now, the other thing that magnetic brakes can't do is they can't hold a train. By that I mean they work off of eddy currents and when you slow down the vehicle the production of that eddy current goes away and it can't hold the train in one position. You cannot use it to stop the train. You still have a mechanical pinch brake that activates as the block. Alright so let's talk a little bit about construction. There are two main components to a magnetic brake. There is the brake, the uh, magnet itself, which is a neodymium magnet. They are the strongest magnets pretty much on earth. So they have the most attraction. So a brake is lined with these guys, but they're about three inches tall, two and a half inches wide, and about an inch thick. So they're extremely, extremely powerful. And then the way those work, is inside the magnet, inside the, the shoe, there is a north facing magnet and a south facing magnet, and the two are lined up with each other. So that there is the maximum amount of pulling between the two. And then when you look at that from the top, you'll find that there's more magnets in there, of course, lining the entire length of it, and they oscillate polarity. So you have a north, and then a south, then a north, then a south, then a north, then a south, all the way through. And on the opposite side, the same magnets are also inverted to match their polarity as well. So you have a north here and a south here, and then a north here and then a south here. So they're constantly flip-flopping all the way down through there. Now on the train, if it's a limb ride, or on the track, if it's a standard roller coaster, you have the fins that go through them. The fin on a ride, like a linear induction ride, is called a reaction fin. When they're mounted in the track, they're simply reactive fins 
or just referred to as brake fins, braking fins. No real fancy names to them. And the big question is, what are they? Uh, what are they made out of? Are they just steel? It's like, no, they're not. Steel is magnetic, and to create eddies, you do not want a magnetic uh, material. The main three components are basically copper, aluminum, nickel. And those create the greatest reactive force and by that I mean they create the largest eddy. Now an eddy current is what the brake actually operates off of. So eddy currents are very interesting little things. Uh, basically you take a very strong magnet like a neodymium magnet and you put a plate of aluminum in front of it and then move the magnet back and forth and it starts feeling like the magnet is in syrup. It actually has a resistance to it. Put the magnet on a car like a little Hot Wheels car and roll it across a steel plate, that car goes just as fast over the steel. The magnet actually doesn't slow down. But if you run the same experiment with aluminum, it slows right down and comes to a stop in aluminum. Fun little trick. It's a residual current that's left inside of there. As the magnet moves, let's just call the polarity of the magnet positive, although there's opposites of each side, so it's kind of not quite fair to say, but for simplicity, let's just say it's positive, as that you put that magnet on that aluminum plate and then you move it, well, what was left from where that magnet was is actually a negative eddy current. Take a positive magnet, put it on a plate of aluminum, and then move it, and there's a negative force left there. Opposites attract, basically, right? So as you move it, that negative tries to stay with the positive but it can't. The slower you move it, the worse off it is. The faster you move it, the stronger it becomes. Pretty interesting, right? Uh, the last part of the equation is the actual fin itself. The longer the fin is, the less reactive it is because the eddy currents are kind of able to swirl out and they just kind of dissipate in the big fin. But as the fin comes, as the eddy current gets close to an edge, it has nowhere to go. So the braking force intensifies as it comes up to the edge of a fin. So the middle fin on a limb coaster is typically solid. It's a solid piece all the way down. But the outer fins are actually split in the center. And the reason they're split in the center is because they wanted that much braking force into the train. So those outer ones are the ones that the train actually slows down on. So those are the ones that actually do the stopping. So they wanted a higher stopping force, so they split the fin. So it was harder going through all those brakes. Not a bad video for the time, right? I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed making it. All right. That's it for me. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. It does help me out. I do appreciate it. Please stay off those air gates. If you want to see this video in its full content, there's plenty more to learn. So just click on this link right here. And if you want to subscribe, go ahead and click on this link right here. Take care.